Yeah, hi folks, this is Martin from the photoacademy.eu and we go on with my photo series about On One Software's Perfect Photo Suite 6 and here with the part 4 of this series I like to show you one of my favorites and this is black and white for landscape photography. You also can use the settings I show you or the way to get in black and white for portraits as well but I like to show it on my favorite kind of photography and this is landscape. Yeah I'm, I started my photography back in the film days with black and white mostly Ilford films and this is what I show you today. I already copied this layer to a second layer so that we can, we can directly go into the perfect effects. And back on the perfect effects we have the black and white presets down here. And for this image I choose and filter that is nearly the same filter you have back in the film days in front of your lens and for this kinds of photography I often use this red filter. Yeah and the only thing I change for these effect options is the toner and here I choose a little bit of sepia, only a tiny little bit, something like that or a little bit less maybe. Yeah, this is good to me. Uh, you can change the contrast as well if you like but I change it in, on a different way and for this I add another layer. And as I mentioned before, I'm coming from the film days and I often use Ilford films. And for this image, I think the best will be the HP5 with 400 ISO from Ilford. I love the contrast, the whites, the blacks and the grain from this special Ilford film. It's a very good effect for me for this kind of images. And after that we can add another layer and on this layer I will sharpen the image a little bit. It's already a sharp image. We can zoom in with a hundred percent so here you can see in the grays the great grain from this film effect but I will sharpen it so I go into the details. It is already sharp, it's a sharp image directly from the raw converter but I will give it a little bit more of a high pass just a little bit, not too much. Take a look on the before and the after. It's still... The halo is okay to me but the strength is a little bit too much. We can protect a little bit more of the highlights. And a little bit of the darks as well. A little bit more for highlights I think. Yeah, halo, go down a little bit. Yeah, I think this is okay. Um, I often use the sharpening effect after I use the film effect but you can start with the sharpening and then you can add the film effect but I always think about the ending of this story. I think print and for print 
I like to have a little bit of a rough image. It's much better for the printing afterwards if you sharpen the whole image like I do. And the last we can give to the image, zoom back, it fits to the to the screen. We can use a vignette, add another layer and then we can use some of the effects here down in the bar or we can go in and say here from the effect options panel vignetting so we can hide the preset bar and concentrate the eye on the image with the vignetting and uh, I like to have a little bit of this kind of vignette to the image. This looks good to me, I think, but I will go down with the strength a little bit more and not with the brightness. Yeah, this comes close to that what I like to have for this image. And um, this is it. It's good for my taste. I have a hard contrast. And um, this is okay. We can apply this effect and go back to our layers panel where we have the effect and on this I will go down with the opacity just a little bit and I hide this black and white go back to the second layer and add another black and white to it and this time I use the yellow filter apply it can delete the second layer and we can go down with the opacity for this as well so that we get back a little bit of the blue tone and the greens to the image then we can open the first black and white layer and go down with the opacity just a little bit to about 70% I think and then I use the masking brush go down with the size set the brush opacity to something about 40% and then I paint back a little bit of these very dark areas so that I have a little bit more of the details back to them to the shadow areas I love to have shadow areas for black and white very dark but in some areas I want to have the details back. And for this I start painting the mask without showing it. You can show the mask in different ways as an overlay, as in white, as in dark or the grayscale. Sometimes on black and white I take a look on whites so that I can see where I paint but mostly I paint only to my taste, to my eyes 
there's no need for me to show the mask. I can see what happened to the image, the areas I paint on and some parts that I don't like. I paint back to give the whole image a little bit more of an open look to the darker parts. And also to the whites, sometimes they are not very good, they're blown out a little bit, so we can paint back this. And as you know, the eye is looking at first to the highlights on an image and if the clouds are whiter as everything, the eye fixes these parts first, but I want to have the eye going down to the landscape to this uh, river here, so there's no need to have the eye on the clouds, they're not so dramatic. I paint it back a little bit. I think a little bit more will be good. So I change the opacity. And you see that was too much, so I can say paint in. And we can paint in this area again. And also on this mountain here, I want to have it a little bit darker, so I can paint back the mountain. And this is a process, it takes a time a little bit. You're looking around on the image and you change some little parts of it. And go, go up with the brush size a little more again. Paint in this area here. And yeah, I think this is good. Maybe a little bit more to the to the whites here. Paint back the effect of the hard contrast layer. And we can take a look on the mask, the overlay or in the whites. Overlay is uh, the best way for this, I think. Yeah, and if you wonder what, why I have the second black and white layer here, it's only for this you can see now. If I hide this layer, there's uh, all the colors coming back, the reason of the masking. So this is the only reason why I have this second black and white layer. It's only to have the black and white if I paint out the contrast of the my first layer. You can see if I paint out it, they, I will get the color back to the image. And this is nothing what I like. I like to have a little bit of the color, as you say, see here. I think it's good, but it's only my taste that I had a little bit of a color. That was the reason why I changed the black and white from the first layer to a sepia tone. Um, it's a good way to do. If you don't like it, you can change the opacity and you have a clear black and white image, but I like to have for the printing a little bit of a tone to it. Uh, works very good to the most papers I use. Yeah, this was the little tutorial about 
how you get a black and white image by only using on one's perfect photo suite. This is it for part 4. Hope you like it. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.